Hi everyone, my name is Jen Harding. I'm a dryland product specialist for our dryland department in North America. Today I want to go over our online configurator for our dryland linear actuators. Our configurator is a great tool. It uses all of the data that IGIS Cologne Germany does throughout the year testing our products. Thousands of hours of data is then published behind the scenes into this tool so that when you put your application data into it, it will provide you with the best possible actuator for your specific application needs. So come with me, we're going to fill out an application today and see what results we get. When visiting iGuess.com, you will look into our top orange bar and there is a tab that says configurators. If you click on that and then click linear motion technology, you'll get access to all of the tools the dryland department currently offers. The first configuration tool that I'm going to help you walk through today is our linear actuators tool. If we click into that, you will see that we now have the option to start putting in application data so that we can get the best actuator for our application. The first decision you need to make is if you are motorizing or manually operating your actuator. Most of the time I find that I'm speaking with people who want to motorize their applications, so we're going to walk through a motorized application today. The next section you will find is knowing what system alignment you have. So this is referring to the orientation of our actuator. Are you mounting the actuator horizontally, laterally, upside down, or vertically? Once you know that, select your option. We are going to do horizontal at the side today or lateral. After you know the orientation of your system, we are going to enter the load parameters. So what is the weight that you are attaching to the carriage of the actuator? In this case, we are attaching 20 newtons of load to our carriage. The next section is pretty important for IGUS. Our parts work by sliding elements rather than rolling which most people are familiar with. So our sliding elements need to take into account how far out moment loads are. We have what is called a two to one rule. The two to one rule refers to how far away the center of mass is from our bearings and how far away a drive force is, for instance. So when getting to the load section of our tool, please make sure that you enter some value for your uh, center of mass coordinates. The center of mass coordinates, even if you don't have the exact data, a best guess would be preferred to help get you the most accurate results. If we look at our orientation that we did before, coordinates are provided to you. IGUS has coordinates that are X in the direction of travel, Z left or right to the carriage, and Y which is up or through the carriage. For this 20 uh, Newton load, we are going to have our load off of the carriage straight directly, 40 millimeters, and we're also going to have it to the right, 20 millimeters. Once you put your center of mass coordinates into the tool, we can move on to how far the travel needs to be. In this case, we need a foot or 305 millimeters. The speed is relatively slow and the acceleration is also slow but this will be running 50% of the time, so a duty cycle of 50%. Once you ex accept the disclaimer at the bottom, it shows that 87 suitable products are available to you. If we click on this, we will get many different options. We have lead screw actuators, we have belt-driven actuators, and we also have a gear rack option that shows as a possible solution for you today. Because this is a smaller load, and I would like a finer pitch of travel, something more precise, I'm going to look at just the lead screws by clicking on the left-hand side of the screen and narrowing those options down. And I would also like to have this self-locking. Some of our actuators, if you uh, turn them upside down, they can move under gravity. So self-locking just means that if someone was to bump the actuator, uh, the lead screw would not be able to move forward or backward the carriage will stay in position. So we would like a self-locking application today. After that, you can see there are 13 available options left. 
from this, we can look and compare pricing that's provided all the way to the right side of the tool. So if cost is what's really driving your application, that would be the first place for you to look. If service life and how long this product is going to have to last before you have to perform maintenance on the actuator is a concern, that would be our second most to the right. And you can sort by that to get the best service life. Also, you are able to look at the uh, pitch of the lead screw. If you know how many turns you'd like per revolution, that is provided in the middle of the tool. I think today that our biggest concern is probably cost. So we're going to look at our SLW 1040 with a 10 by two lead screw. Once we get here, we have a newer feature on our results page and the CAD model for our SLW is instantly starting to be assembled. So once you select this product, you'll be able to immediately download the step file for this and drop it into your CAD model. The options below are for the motor. If you would like IGUS to provide a motor, we can certainly do that. And there's different options for the motor. We have stranded wire, we have metric plugs, we have motors with encoders, and we have motors with brakes. So all of those can be found in the motor section here. We also offer the cables. So if you don't want to have to provide your own cables that connect to our motors, we can do that for you. You just would click that you would like the connection cables. The standard lengths we have are three meter, five meter, and 10 meter. We have proximity switches, which are our limit switches or homing devices. That'll tell you when your carriage has reached the end of travel or the start of travel. You can add them by selecting the box for proximity switch. This is great because you can edit the quantity if you need one at both ends. You can select and change that to two. Please also take into account that when you install a proximity switch or a limit switch, it will reduce the amount of stroke that you have. So you need to account for that when designing around the use of proximity switches. We are going to do uh, a proximity switch. And lastly, you have the option of using one of our motor controllers. This is a great affordable option that I guess offers to control your application directly using one of our motors. This one is recommending a D1, but we could also go to a D7, which is specific to the motor that I've selected above. And if we select the D7, that has a little bit less features than the D1, but it will save you even more money. If you get to this point and you see it says upon request, you can simply click request quote, and Inside Sales will reach out to you with a quote within 24 hours. You can also add to the shopping cart. Your configuration will be finalized and it will generate your CAD models for you and um, provide an option to click the request for quote directly through the shopping cart with a finalized part number that way. Additionally, you can download a PDF document if you would like to review and come back to this and view all of your application data uh, that you've entered into this form. And lastly, you can share this configuration easily. So if you're talking to someone on our live chat feature, you can copy this link and send it directly to them and they'll be able to view what you have configured on our tool and can walk through it together. If you'd like to check out this tool for yourself, please see the link below. You'll have immediate access to our Drylin online actuator configurator tool. If you're going through this and you find that you need additional support, please reach out to us directly. You can do that via phone call or chat, and we'll be happy to either stop by in person, hop on a Teams call, a phone call, whatever's easiest for you to assist you to get you the best application solution. I guess also offers lots of other configurators on our website. So if linear actuators is not what you need at this time, we also have slewing rings, bearings, energy chains, cables and motors. All of these tools are available again for free at the location that we saw at the beginning of the video. And uh, we'll see you next time for the next video.